Captain Cousteau had ranked the collection of islands among the most spectacular in the world, and since then, divers have been spreading the word. People come from the four corners of the earth to explore dive sites, which have become mythical. Okay, guys, can everybody see me? Okay, if there is a current, I suggest, please do not swim too fast. Let the current do all the work. The wall itself is a really beautiful wall. Tim has close to a thousand dives to his name in the Palau waters, and before becoming an instructor, he monitored the natural area of the rock islands as a ranger. Nevertheless, don't forget to look out into the blue. You never know, you might see something good, big, passing by. Okay, guys, the pool is open. <laughs> To find yourself facing a Nautilus is to contemplate a bit of prehistory. This cephalopod has hardly changed in shape in 400 million years. Silvertip sharks grey reef sharks. As harmless as a Napoleon fish for the divers, the sharks are protected in the waters of Palau and you come here to observe them. And under the indifferent eye of the barracudas, here is the queen of the Palau waters, the manta ray. To observe this gentle giant, it is enough to position yourself at its cleaning spot. The rays move around it slowly to allow the cleaner wrasses to clean their mouths and to rid their gills of all the parasites. With all this underwater wealth, the remarkable preservation of Palau began with strict traditions that have protected certain zones and forbidden fishing during the breeding season. These traditions have recently been encouraged with new laws protecting natural areas. In such a way, the island of Nemeles is the property of the traditional leaders. Only the beach is open to the tourists, and only for the last six months. I mean, the elders protected the nature. 
because it's not. It was. Uh, it was a source of their life. This is uh, what they live on every day. Mm. So even though now the governments are looking at it as one of the main source of income, because of the the tourism, tourism flow to the islands because of the nature. I think it's still. Uh, they, had, they made a wise decision to preserve and protect it. To the north of the Rock Islands, above Karor, the country's main town, extends the large island of Babaldo. It's almost entirely virgin land and sparsely inhabited. It is here that Francis Torribiong, a well-known figure in Palau, chose to settle. This pioneer of tourism explored every nook and cranny of the island and discovered the main dive sites. But for a few years, he has taken a back seat. On his family's land, he has recently gone into forestry plantation. This are Mahogan. This one also, right here. The mahogany trees. Francis has also planted teaks, nonis, and lemon trees. He would like other Palauans to follow his pioneering initiative. The environment is the key for this place to oh. bring, uh, generate revenue. But we need to, there's a point in time that we need to slow down or else you, we destroy the place. So I was in the diving business, I'm still in the diving business, but I can see that if we continue uh, bring more people to diving to generate taxes, it's not going to work. So I decided I'd try something else, and planting trees. And I am hope it's a long term, but I think, it's, I think it will work. The initiative is new to Palau. The lands of the archipelago are almost untouched. Francis has set up home next to his plantation. He built his house on a former bauxite mine, worked by the Japanese between the two world wars. 70 years later, nature still hasn't reasserted itself. Proof that the ecosystem on these small islands is fragile. <laughs> 